what's your name? Preacher. What made you two want to do a Western? Because both of you are producers and Kevin, you know, you're the main star. What made you want to do a Western? Because it's obviously, you know, an interest of yours then. This was, uh, Badland was our third Western. So we, you know, it was definitely in our wheelhouse of what we like to do. And I think, you know, as, a, as an independent film company, yeah. you're always striving to, you know, uh, better yourself with each project. You're taking a step up the ladder each time. So we already made two Westerns that were, you know, uh, fairly well received. This, there's a movie called Any Bullet Will Do. If you like Badland, you should check out Any Bullet Will Do. It's a fantastic Western. It's another one that we did takes place in the snow. But I wanted to play the straightforward spaghetti western, gun twirling, shoot everybody down guy, but with a little heart and a little, you know, my twist on. Uh, so we just created this character that, uh, you know, was employed uh, by the senator to hunt down these uh, Confederate war criminals and, you know, and just weave through all these storylines. We thought it was kind of a, a relevant, you know, kind of a current story, not COVID-19 current, but two months ago current story, three months ago current story. Uh, and we love the message and the strong female characters. And uh, this was the, the movie that we wanted to do. And I got to live out every childhood fantasy all wrapped into one and do this movie at the same time. So <laughs> that was the driving force for me. <laughs> I appreciate and I couldn't do it without the help of Jennifer Ambrose because she is an amazing partner. So she came on uh, at the very, actually just before we really uh, greenlit this project. And I couldn't have done it without her. And she's a valuable ally. Uh, so I'll let her tell her side of the story for that question, if you have it. Kevin and I just formed a relationship. We decided to work together. This was the next project that, you know, the team was already working on. I happily came on board, you know, after reading the script and understanding the story. Um, and the storyline, you know, is obviously not just about you know, shoot him up Western, although that's, you know, the, the dream that he lived out, but there's a love story within the strong female characters, of course, drove me uh, to love this project, particularly Mira Sorvino and owning, you know, the ranch and working there and taking care of her father and doing all of the things by herself, which maybe was probably pretty rare during that time. And, you know, that, you know, just being unmarried and without a man there to take care of her. Um, I loved it. And she obviously loved that role and why she came on to, to you know, participate in this. Um, but it was inevitable Kevin and I were going to work on projects together anyway. If this was the next one, here we are and we're going to continue uh, making a lot of movies. Well, I appreciate the Western factor. My um, grandfather was in Westerns in like the 30s before even Roy Rogers. So, Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, they gave him his name was Bob Tex Allen and he was, you know, and these series of westerns, and so it's cool. And they probably shot in a similar location because you guys probably. Shot. Well, yeah. Well, we're, we there was shot, a lot of western shot there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, we shot at Valuze Ranch. Uh, they they've been operating. I don't want to get quoted on it, but I want to say since the '30s and '40s. Yeah, so, since Santa Clarita. I mean, they have like a, a museum there of you know stuff. They, <laughs> been that property there's three movie studios there like uh, outdoor location stuff deadwood is shot there uh and some other gun smoke was shot there so they so they uh it's been in the family for generations and yeah uh, you know, they've been collecting memorabilia and all, they collect world war ii memorabilia and all kinds of stuff so, they yeah. have so much stuff and it's just so full of history it's really cool and it's right here in, in southern california i think the nice thing about westerns too is that they have a lot of great themes like your movie um some of the themes were really good about you know chivalry but also the strong woman um and so can you talk about that a little bit more kevin well yeah so i i mean you said it right there he 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 has a big heart he's uh you know, we say he's 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 three three of my childhood heroes rolled into one. He's he's Clint Eastwood in every western he's done. Uh, he's John Rambo, you know, because he's the tough, you know, <laughs> job done. And he's Luke Skywalker. He has the nobility of a Jedi. He he knows the difference between right and wrong. And you know, it, it doesn't matter who stands in in the way of of right and wrong. He's going to you know bring justice. But you're only you're you should only be afraid if you if you're guilty. And that's it, right? And that's and that's his code, and he'll stop at nothing. So he has this job to do, and it isn't until he meets Sarah Cook that the job interferes with a personal, you know, where he he feels for her, so he lets the father live out his days. 
because he has this, you know, he, he you know, when, you know uh, Reginald Cook says, you know, my daughter, what's going to happen to her? And, and Reacher takes it in for a minute and he says, you know, I, I can't answer that. You know, but then he takes it upon himself. You know what? I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to let you live out the rest of your life. But I have to stay here, you know, to make sure that I see you through because that's my job. So even though it's taking away from the next bad guy he has to get or whatever, he, he takes it upon himself. You know, he, he bends the, the law, you know, psychologically in his head. He bends it so, so that he can still do his job but fulfill his heart a little bit. And then he falls in love with, with Sarah. Ultimately, he thinks he's saving her. He does her a favor. But then once the father dies, he's, you know, spoiler alert, he's out. Uh, but ultimately, at the end of the film, she saves him. So she's not. A, she's a very strong woman. She's not a damsel in distress. I don't think he's out really to save anybody. He's just always doing the right thing. And if the right thing means you're you're at the end of a rope or you're put on a pedestal or whatever the case may be, the right thing is the right thing. The right thing was helping her uh, save her farm and not letting her see her father hang. Uh, so you know he he was in pursuit of the right thing. Uh, and, but the job takes precedence over everything. And, and I think within that storyline too, it was nice to say that, she, you know, she was saying my father's changed or he's asked for forgiveness. And I liked that theme about forgiveness and that people can change after kind of having a hard past and hurting other people. It's true. People do change, uh, to breach your, unfortunately, the, the, <laughs> you know, the job is the job. He was guilty of those things. And even though time has passed and he was forgiven, uh, you know, his ultimate, uh, you know, the, the redemption for it, it's not up to, to Matthias Breacher to judge the, the person, whether he's uh, fulfilled his his commitments or, you know, whether he's redeemed himself or or he's been, you know, um, you know, the, the redemption of it all. But ultimately God is going to judge whether his sins have been cleansed or not. So it's not up to you. Know, Breacher is just the vessel to get him from here to here. And, you know, that's his job. And it's, it's not up to him. You know, you know, he, he can't say whether he's forgiven or not. He's yeah. just doing the job. There'll be the ultimate forgiveness or not. Once he, once Breacher does his job. Jennifer, maybe you want to talk about this a little bit too, um, just the success that you guys have had on Netflix and um, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're we're very excited uh, with everybody, you know, staying home and, and watching and, you know, getting eyeballs on it. It's been, we're, we're overwhelmed, I'd say, with, with emotion and excitement and gratitude uh, for everybody that did watch. Um, you know, that it was number three in all of film on Netflix for almost a week, and number seven, all, you know, overall programming. So obviously we're, you know, utilizing that to now, you know, go ahead and um, you're going to see more of Badland. You're going to see more of the characters. We're working currently on um, a comic, a, a moving comic that is going to be available uh, to try to raise money for the Actors Fund. If you don't know what the Actors Fund is, they don't just raise money for actors. They give assistance to everybody in the entertainment industry, crew, musicians, artists, you name it. They've already raised over $14 million and they're trying to raise, uh, I think, another 10. Um, so we're going to be using, you know, the characters from Badland, including Breacher. It really is based around Breacher's character. Um, the comic's already been created. We're working with... Um, a writer by the name of Scott Lobdell, who's a very prolific comic book writer. He wrote a lot of comics in the 80s. Uh, Kevin can speak more about that because he's also a comic book fan in addition to Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> um, but Scott also wrote Happy Death Day. You know, so those of you in the film world know who he is from that. Um, and so we're really excited about that. We're just, we can't say enough, you know, thanks for everybody who watched and, uh, you know, the, obviously the, the interest around our movie. But I think it was timely. I think everything that you've already talked about with Kevin's character and the hero and all of that, I think people needed that in this moment and they needed to, you know, somehow feel like their savior and there's, you know, faith to be restored and humanity and all of that. So I think, you know, just the timing, obviously, of when it was released, the fact that, you know, we're all on lockdown, but the themes that we've already all talked about 
really made it um, a, a success and a hit and garnered the interest. That's my opinion. I, you know, Kevin might have more to say about that. I agree. And I just want to say, I think, you know, uh, there's a sense of patriotism right now. Obviously, we're in a global pandemic and, you know, we have to bond as a country. Hopefully we're going to bond as a world as a result. But uh, there's a sense of patriotism that goes along with the Western. You know, it's American history. And it's, it's uh, you know, I call it American mythology. It's, you know, the, Jesse James is the King Arthur of America, you know, and his Cult 45 is Excalibur. You know, it's like, even though it's based, it, it's, it's, he's a real person, uh, but you know how stories get passed down over generations and people get either villainized or, you know, heroized, is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> Correct me, Jennifer. Uh, you know, be, you, they become, you know, larger than life characters. And the Old West is, you know, it happened here and it happened here in the past, you know, 200 years. And so there's something very romantic about these larger than life heroes that took place on our own soil, you know, and, and somebody's grandfather's grandfather could have, you know, shared a cup of coffee with Wyatt Earp. You know, it's just so cool, all these stories. And it just gives this, I feel, it gives this sense of, you know, patriotism, you know, for lack of a better word, and especially during this time. So I think maybe it filled, it just came out at the right time. And I couldn't be more happy to be, uh, you know, one of the people involved that is giving some escapism and some relief to the people that are under, you know, the entire world right now that's under this stress. If you can have some escapism and dive into this story and get something out of it. I mean, that's why we make movies and it's just such an important time to give a message and, and give some relief to people, uh, not just monetarily, but you know, in, in, you know, stress with stress and in your own mind and just a break from what's going on. And we, we got to fill those shoes, shoes for a little bit. And I mean, I'm getting message messages from people on my Instagram that they've watched it two, three, four times times they love it i mean as a as an actor and as a filmmaker you can't i mean we to me right now we've hit the top wherever we go from here is just gravy but it's just the best feeling in the world and i want to thank everybody watching and everybody that watched thank you because it's the people that made this happen for us it's the people that made it there was no marketing push there was nobody telling you to watch it it just there was a release that came out the standard release what's new on netflix 20 movies and badland and people watched it and then they told other people to watch it and then it trended and then it came up as an icon. Oh, trending. And then it went into the top 10 and then people said, Oh, it's top 10. And then it moved up and it was just, it just happened organically. And that's the biggest reward ever. And to be able to be part of it uh, and have been a big part of it is just so satisfying, I guess. And I just, I have so much gratitude. So thank you everyone that watched it and everyone that was involved in bringing it to the screen. Well, keep it up. Where where can people find the comic, or what can we find out more about that information? Well, so the comic we're working on it right now. Uh, there's a there's an online comic version, standard comic. It's going to be five issues, uh, just ten pages per issue. So it'll be fifty pages total, like a mini graphic novel. Uh, we'll promote that. It'll be on uh, Quarren Comics. Scott Lobdell created a thing called Quarren Comics. It's quarantine comics. Scott Lobdell wrote the. A lot of the X, he created X-Men characters in the 90s. Uh, he wrote Superman and the Red Hood. He's a very prolific comic book writer. He's fantastic. He's brilliant. Uh, and, you know, a few movies, as Jennifer discussed. So he started a thing called Quarren Comics, uh, which you can find on Instagram and Facebook. And, and you, could, uh, you could check out the comic there. But what we did, because of the success of Badland, uh, and because of Scott's success, and Jennifer touched on it a few minutes ago, that we're turning it into what we call a motion comic where it's not really animated, but it just, you know, it's, it's yeah. like in a film version where it moves, you know, through the story and I'm going to voice the character of Matthias Preacher. So it really just takes place uh, in the events before uh, Badland where it's just the story of Breacher hunting down some bad guys and just a little story that, you know, that could have taken place before Badland. So it's cool. And right now we're trying to uh, cast some bigger names, uh, to voice the other characters so that we can promote it and raise money for the Actors Fund uh, COVID-19 relief. So, uh, you know, we, there's a million charities that we could donate to. There's people on the front lines and there's, uh, you know, there's, you know, everybody out there that, that we can donate to. But because we're filmmakers, we wanted to start in our own community. And I have so many friends and peers that are out of work, that don't know how to pay their rent, don't know what they're gonna do. So if we can give, we're, we'll start there. And if this thing blows up and we start to make it tons of money for charity, 
then we'll start branching out to other charities. But right now we just want to start, you know, uh, in, in our own community. If you like the Westerns, check out any bullet will do. You can see it uh, free with Prime or on Tubi for free with ads, Voodoo free with ads, uh, you know, or you can rent it or buy the DVD at Walmart or on Amazon. Uh, then there's Big Legend if you like uh, Bigfoot movies. That's our fun Bigfoot movie. It's actually our biggest hit uh, to date next to Badland. Uh, so you can check that out on all those same platforms. The only one we have on Netflix right now is Badland. Uh, we have another film uh, uh, called Swell that you might want to check out as well uh, that you can see on all the same platforms that I just mentioned, uh, Amazon Prime, Tubi, Voodoo, uh, iTunes, that kind of stuff. But what we have coming up soon is we just acquired a book series. Um, uh, it's based, it's a, it, it's the, the um, I'm having a mental block here. Bobby Cole is the author. Uh, he wrote a series of three books based on this character called Jake Crosby, who's just a regular guy. Uh, the first book, he's taking his nine-year-old daughter turkey hunting. It's turkey season. He's a big outdoor enthusiast and just a regular guy stockbroker. Uh, while they're out in the woods, they come across some bad guys, and then he's put in this life or death situation. He has to protect his daughter. So it's just this regular guy with his daughter, you know, running from these guys. It's a really cool, very intense thriller, action thriller. Uh, and then we have another film that, and that's a book, that'll be three movies. Uh, and that's, we have that coming up in the future. And we were in the middle of getting ready to make a movie called Day of Reckoning, uh, which is going to have an amazing cast. That's a, that's a modern day action film. And I think uh, if you like Badland, it's, it's basically a modern Western. You know, it's that same kind of, it's a small town sheriff that gets put in a situation. Uh, it's really cool. It's a really good story. So keep on the lookout for that. And uh, but the comic is next. The comic is what we're doing to keep busy uh, and raise money for COVID-19 mm -hmm. until we're allowed to go back into production. But it's safe. Well, thank you, guys. Cool. Really appreciate you having us. Thank you. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. Good to meet you. Have a great day. And you stay safe. What do you say we give these folks a good old-fashioned dime novel showdown?